Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the Experimental Homestead. My name is Crystal, and if you're joining us for the first time, I am filming from Zone 8B in the Pacific Northwest. It's bright and early today, and I wanted to get some work done before I have to go to work. <laughs> so today I want to make some pizza dough and pie crust for the freezer, um, because in a few days it's going to be pie day, so I want to make a pie. <laughs> My partner and I are both scientists, so <laughs> we want to celebrate Pie Day with a pie. Um, I've got lots of apple pie filling canned on the shelf from last fall, and I thought it'd be fun to make a little Pie Day treat with you all. So I'm going to make a bunch of those, get them in the freezer, save one for tomorrow for Pie Day. <laughs> and yeah, so I'm going to go put my hair up wash my hands, all that jazz, and I will meet you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so I figure we will start with the pie crust uh, recipe. I'm going to be making enough for four nine-inch uh, pie crusts, and I'm going to be freezing three of them, and I'm going to keep one for making the pie. <laughs> so I've got everything laid out here we can just get started right away. I'm going to be using, um, just mixing by hand, but if you have a food processor, you can use that. I actually don't have one, so I don't have the ability to use a food processor, but you can do that if you want to make this easier. Um, I like using my hands. I don't find it that tedious, uh, but you can get really nice, like, um, layers in your pie crust, making it really nice and extra flaky. It's really good. So for both recipes, I'm using all-purpose flour. I'm actually gonna weigh out my dough instead of using measurements, cut measurements, just because it's more accurate that way. I'm weighing out 660 grams of flour. Ooh, so close. Okay, that's 660 grams of flour. Um, I'm using two cups of butter. I'm going to cut it into cubes and then I'm going to kind of work it in with my pastry cutter. Um, you can half this recipe and you would end up with two pie crusts, but I mean if you're gonna go through the trouble of freezing pie crusts or pizza doughs, you might as well make enough for it to make a difference. And then you can freeze them for around like four months. So my butter is not cubing very well. Um, it's cold butter. It's right from the fridge. Um, but I guess in the time that I was filming my intro, it got warm enough to not cube very well. So I did want to mention that you do want this to be cold butter when you work with it. Butter and flour. So you can either get in here with your hands and try to kind of, <laughs> you can break down the butter, or I'm going to go in at least at the beginning with pastry cutter to try to break that down. Um, the idea is that the flour and the butter kind of mix together enough to make it like crumbly. So you would want to have chunks of butter of various sizes from like you can't see it all the way up to like almond size um and yeah that's why if you use a food processor like it can just make everything one uniform texture and it's not really what you want so just maybe be gentle with the food processor if you're using that it's really quite hot in here so if I find the butter is getting really melty, it's not yet, but if I find it is, I can always throw this in the fridge for a little bit and get started on the pizza dough. Are you guys getting excited for spring yet? I'm so excited to garden. The uh, grow zone, my indoor uh, seed starting area is just booming. There's so much stuff going on in there. There's Peppers galore, marigolds, nasturtiums, lots of herbs. 
And I'm pretty excited to start tomatoes this week, I think. I do a fun thing with my tomatoes. I mentioned this in my seed haul video. So if you, I think it was my seed haul video. Um, if you wanted to watch that, basically I do a, it's like a tournament with all my tomatoes. I pick, I have a favorite cherry slicer and aroma. And then every year I throw in a new tomato to try to <laughs> beat out another tomato. So this year I'm adding Virginia sweets to the mix and it'll be battling my Prudence purple tomatoes that I loved last year. If you guys have a favorite tomato variety, let me know. I do um, like to grow heirlooms because I like to save my seeds and I just really want to make sure that they're uh, true to type. So you see that? You got chunks of butter in there, but they're all different kind of sizes. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar. You can add more sugar to this. Um, it just makes it more of a like sweet crust, whereas the way it is now is good for savory applications as well. So I'm not going to mess with it because sometimes this is really nice for like a chicken pot pie in the uh, cast iron skillet. And I'm just going to add some sea salt. Uh, oops, two teaspoons. So I messed that up. I'm just going to leave it. We're allowed to make mistakes. Okay, I'm just going to mix that in because I probably should have added the sugar earlier. But that's okay. And so over here, I've had some, well, it was ice water. <laughs> I swear it was ice water. I'm sitting here. Ice is now melted. The point is, we want cold water so that the butter doesn't melt here. That's kind of the name of the game is don't let the butter melt. So I'm going to add, hmm, let's add six tablespoons first and then see how it goes. Five, six. So at this point it's kind of a texture thing. You can see it looks like flour still, but you should be able to take a handful and it should hold together. This one's not holding together yet. So I anticipate another four or so tablespoons. Um, all transparency, this isn't my recipe. <laughs> so if you want, I can link the recipe down below. I don't want you thinking I came up with this one. Some of them, some of the recipes I, I put on here are mine or re my renditions of somebody else's or family recipes but this one is not mine, <laughs> so I don't want you guys thinking that it's mine. Credit where it's due. So at this point, I'm going to form it into a ball and then four discs to go into the freezer. One I will keep in the fridge for tomorrow. So what I've been doing is flattening it and folding it over and flattening it. Um, kind of creating like layers. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but because I've flattened and folded so many times, there's actually a lot of layers. And then I'll just take these wedges and I will make them into a rough disc. Okay, there you have four pie crusts. So the one pie crust that I'm going to put aside for tomorrow, I'm just going to wrap in some beeswax wrap and put it in the fridge. Um, one thing you'll notice on this channel is that I really try my best to reduce my plastic use in the kitchen um 
there is no way that po this much plastic is good for the world. <laughs> and there's no such thing as a way when you throw it away. Um, so I try my best to eliminate plastic. Um, so I'm kind of excited to show you guys a couple of different ways that I try to do that in this video. But I just wanted to point out to you that I do have a video pending where I'm going to be making these wax wraps from scratch. So if you want to learn about that, stay tuned. That video will come out soon. Um, yeah, if you don't know what beeswax wrap is, essentially it's like an all natural fabric, like cotton, and you paint on this sticky, waxy mixture that we'll make together, and essentially you get a sticky fabric. It's breathable, so your vegetables want to breathe when they're in the fridge. I've um, you know like when a block of cheese gets really like hard <laughs> and it's exposed to air in the fridge for too long? I have actually had an experience where I have taken a cheese that looks like that, put it in the beeswax wrap, put it back in the fridge, and it has actually reversed the damage to the cheese. Um, I have had, um, like avocados stay good in the, the fridge for so long. I don't know, this is just incredible. And I... I love it and you know what I really like to use this for is in place of cellophane when I take something to an event like a potluck or a family gathering and I bring like a salad or something use this on top it is almost always a conversation starter <laughs> people like will touch it and they're like oh what is that it's kind of sticky and then I get to the chance to explain what it is but I love beeswax wrap it might sound weird the, the texture and the, the sounds that you're hearing through this video you might be like oh I don't know um, I get it. <laughs> it's weird. It's new, but I love it. So I'm going to keep using my beeswax wrap and I'm going to make some more because they're well loved. Um, if you do want to try beeswax wrap, you can find them like anywhere these days. Um, just make sure that you wash them with cold water and soap. Um, there's beeswax in here that likes to melt with hot things. <laughs> So how they work is you just use the warmth of your hand to kind of like mold it. Creates this nice little breathable package and it's sealed. So it's going to keep the dough nice and soft but it's still going to let it breathe which is nice. The rest of these will probably have to go in plastic. Um, I don't have enough and I'm I don't have enough uh, reusable bags, and I want to use my reusable bag for the pizza dough. So I'm going to throw these guys in plastic, get them in the fr freezer. Um, because if there's other plastic haters watching this video, I understand that you can get reusable Ziplocs, usable freezer bags, relatively cheap on Amazon, stuff like that. Um, I just get a little bit weird about the quality of some of those really cheap ones and the chemicals used to make them and their durability because if they're not durable I don't want them because they're just going to end up in a landfill anyways. So I get a specific uh, freezer bag that I will show you once we're done the pizza dough but basically Everything is FDA approved and all that, that good stuff that's all certified for food use, the dyes even inside of it, everything. Anywho, there's three wipers. Okay, pizza. Let's do it. So again, not my recipe. I will link it down below. I'm actually quadrupling this recipe, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put 7 grams of dry active yeast. Did I say 7 grams? I meant 28 grams because I'm quadrupling. <laughs> 3 cups of warm water. 1 and a half tablespoon of sugar. 
Okay, I'm gonna cover that, let it sit for five or so minutes and get nice and frothy and bubbly. Oof, I had a good little sit down there. I <laughs> hurt my ankles so bad yesterday. I, we were out for a walk yesterday. We go for like a nice little walk around the neighborhood, me and my partner. And I was trying to get a piece of garbage from the ditch and I rolled my ankle the second I stepped off of the pavement. So my ankle is nice and swollen and I am limping around everywhere today and it's hard to stand on my feet in the kitchen today. <laughs> Anywho, it has been five minutes. I had a nice five minute break there. Okay, let's check on the yeasty boys. Look at that, super frothy. You know what's kind of fun is when I was a kid, anytime I tried to make a recipe with yeast, nothing ever happened at all it never got frothy never got bubbly it just was water with chunks of yeast in it why why was that it's the water it's the temperature of the water i was killing the yeast almost instantly <laughs> you learn a lot okay i'm gonna add four tablespoons of olive oil to this mixture i might run out Okay, I'm going to add another tablespoon and a half of sugar, so I use half of it. And then I need three teaspoons of salt, some sea salt. I won't make the same mistake. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking about adding some oregano. I'll see if I have any. I know I have some outside growing. No, I have no oregano, but that would have been nice to put in here. Okay, let's give this a little mix. Um, once I add the flour, I was gonna use, you should use a dough hook. Um, my dough hook is not fit for use. So I'm gonna use the paddle and we're gonna act like I have a dough hook. I don't have a dough hook. Ooh, nice one, yeasty boys. Okay, a whopping eight cups of flour. I'm probably going to mute when I use my KitchenAid stand mixer because it's old. It was like a gift for like my 16th birthday, um, which is like half my life ago now. <laughs> and the motor is kind of shot inside so it does not make the healthiest of noises uh, the poor thing so brief intermission I want to show you guys something else um just on the topic of less plastic in the kitchen, we eat a decent amount of popcorn. <laughs> it's kind of a quick, satisfying snack, and you can make it as healthy as you want. And you can add as much butter and salt as you want if you want to have real fun. Um, but we used to be like any other household and buy the microwave popcorn packs. Um, and then we switched to making it ourselves. We got the microwave popcorn pop popper, which is amazing. Best thing in our kitchen, I swear. Um, but then we started to buy our kernels in bulk. So this is just at our like local grocery store. We just take our own bag, we fill it up, and we use their little twist tie to write the number on it. And yeah, we're liking doing this. This is like, this is huge for us. This is like a lot of popcorn. But um yes you do pay for the weight of your bag but you know what that is literally almost no plastic compared to what it was when we were using the bags of popcorn just a ton of plastic and so much waste cardboard plastic the actual bag um yeah okay and i'll spare you guys the sound
Okay, I just got some uh, flour on the counter. Oh my gosh, that's hard to use. Have you guys like looked at the KitchenAid website? They have like this like build your own um, like mixer sort of platform. Kind of like how you would like decorate your room on like Ikea's website or something. It's so cool. <laughs> you have like so many different colors and bowls. And I was so excited when I got this black one because black is my favorite color. Ah, that's stuck. In case anybody's wondering how I clean my countertops, um, I will, before I start this, I will use a food grade um, counter cleaner and then I will actually pour boiling water across my counter and dry it up. Um, I don't do all of that on screen, just like I don't show you guys every time I wash my hands. Um, okay, I might need to leave this for a bit of an intermission because I do have to run to a meeting. I work from my living room, so it's not a far meeting. <laughs> so this recipe makes 12-inch um, pizzas. So this one will make four 12 inch pizza doughs. Uh, but if you wanted personal pizzas and you wanted just like six inch, then you could actually get a personal pizza crust out of this. Okay, let's cut this. So I've cut the dough into the four um, sections, roughly equal size, and I'm going to hand knead them individually because that was just a lot of dough to work with. So you'll know they're good when you can kind of poke it with your knuckle and it, it's bouncy. No more calling pizza hut, guys. Keep this in your freezer and then you can have pizza whenever you want. You can even make calzones out of this. It's good stuff. So yes, I made all this dough for Pi Day <laughs> to celebrate the international holiday of nerds around the world. But in reality, this is part of my self-reliance journey. Um, as you can tell, because I keep talking about how I have to get to work in meetings, I'm not a full-time homesteader. Um, it is, however, my dream to live off the land as much as I can. Um, it's not possible to be completely self-sufficient, but I want to try. And that's the reason why I have this YouTube channel is so that you guys can kind of follow along with me on that journey. And maybe years from now, who knows what this channel will look like. But um, one of the things I'm working on right now is no more bread products from the store. Um, I make everything. All the bread, all the buns, every time we need something, I've been making it myself. And so having the pizza dough and pie crust on hand in the freezer just makes it so much easier. Um, you know, I make um, English muffins, sourdough bread, and some really good biscuits <laughs> and all that fun stuff. So I just try to um, eliminate one thing, tackle one problem at a time. And this is kind of what I've been working on, especially given that it's been winter and garden season has kind of not been around. Um, once garden season picks up, it'll probably be a lot less in the kitchen work and more outside harvesting, preserving, stuff like that. So I'm kind of excited to switch it up for the YouTube channel a bit. But yeah, this is why I do this because the bread products at the grocery store just laden with like fillers and lots of sugar to keep you coming back and wanting more um i want to make it myself and i'm not one to normally cook a bunch of pies and eat a bunch of pies but <laughs> i made so much pie filling when i was canning in the fall so i need to use that and so we're gonna enjoy some pie you know, I'll have a pie for this and maybe a pie for my birthday coming up and, you know, it's all ready made. Cool. Okay, I gotta get out of here. So I'm gonna quickly pack these up and put them in the freezer. I'm using 
my stasher bag. This is what I was talking about. This is made in the United States, I believe. Um, but it is a food grade silicone that's um, so durable for heat that it is, you know, you can cook sous vide in it, sous vide style. So I don't know, I really like this. It's super handy. You can wash it a bunch of times. When you ruin it to the point where it's no longer usable, you can actually ask them for, like, they'll send you a shipping label and you can mail this directly to their silicone recycler. I don't know. I just, I really like it. Even when I got it, it came in no plastic packaging at all. And it's going to withstand freezing. It's going to withstand the dishwasher. It's going to withstand being boiled. <laughs> I don't know why I would boil it, but it, it can. Um, so this is what I'm using. I only have one because these are an investment. They are not cheap. You know, they pay their people fair wages. So things like that don't, the high quality and high standards of the company don't come cheap. So if you look up a stasher bag and you want to get one, you'll maybe be surprised to see that this bag cost me $30. <laughs> um, it's an investment. I would like to have many more. I chose to get the half gallon bag because I can, you know, if they had like berries or something and I could stack them flat like that and it would just take up less room. They do have ones that have like a flat bottom. They're more like a bowl type, like stand up bags, but I'm going to use this one. And I'm not going to be perfectly plastic free. I am going to put a piece of parchment between them because last time they all stuck together. I'm learning from my mistakes. Well, that's all for me today. Um, thanks for sticking around while we made a bunch of pie crusts and pizza doughs. I wanted to say one thing before I hit out. Um, I'm a new YouTuber. <laughs> I started this channel a couple of months ago and I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, um, as of writing this, I think I need about 525 subscribers <laughs> and a lot of watch hours um, to reach monetization. So I'm struggling a little bit in my watch hours. I, I'm so grateful that I've managed to get almost 500 <laughs> subscribers in just a couple of months. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys for help. Uh, you're not obligated to do anything, of course. But what I can do is I can link a playlist. Um, I think I'm pointing in the right direction. It should pop up right here. <laughs> um, a playlist up here. And basically this playlist is going to be all of my videos. Uh, everything I've made, shorts and, and, and videos, I don't have a lot because I'm so new. So it's not overwhelming. Um, but if you wanted to help me out, you could run that playlist and watch my videos, um, play it while you clean the house, whatever you're doing. Um, those watch hours are really valuable to me right now because the way that my account analytics are headed, I'm going to probably hit my subscriber um, requirement for monetization long before I hit my um, watch hour requirement. And yeah, so I need help in that department. So this is me asking for help. I'm just a regular person um, looking to succeed on YouTube. So <laughs> I can't do it without you guys. Unfortunately, there's no, there's no easy, easy, like simple hack to get to monetization. So playlist is there. If you guys want to help subscribe and watch the playlist, watch it a few times. I don't know any, anything helps. Um, yeah, so as always, I'm super grateful that you guys are here and you took the time to watch this video. I uh, thank you guys all for your like, shares, and subscribes. Uh, and happy Pi Day, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.